Hi, this is Johnny Mike Grab. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual, and I have a crazy one for you today. It's Russell J. Gould and his syntax grammar. Wow. We're, we're going to call this one Russell J. Gould, Sovereign Citizen. Let's do it. Uh, yes, uh, hello, and welcome to the Federal Postal Court. I'm Federal Postal Judge Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould. This is Corporation Case Number RE 881 080 581 US. Wow, here we go. Russell J. Gould, Federal Postal Court. He's been paid for the bills of the lading for corporation between the claimant, Tyshawn. Hyphen LaMarcus Procolin Dispenza, who is in the Federal Postal Court hearing today, and the Vasili is the Internal Revenue Service. Is the Internal Revenue Service here on this day? Uh, you know they're not. <laughs> and uh, and Vasili, whatever that is, is, uh, is their acute euphemism for defendant. The Internal Revenue Service, with fee for freight, for the transshipment of their of their contract for a for their specific location in 230 South Dearborn Street here in Chicago, Illinois, uh -huh. has been given three day notice under the rescission timeline for closure of this hearing on on this specific day. I'm sure the IRS is quaking in their boots right now. <laughs> on your uh, three-day rescission notice, whatever the hell that means. I've autographed the postage stamps, which fee for freight has been paid, and I'm logging them into evidence on this day. So the Internal Revenue Service, uh, are you here? We'll wait, we have a timeline on that. The, the <laughs> There's no timeline on that. They're, they're not in the room and you know it. It's you and the other guy, that's it. <laughs> Stop pretending. The rules and the guidelines for the docketing of this federal postal court are in the constitution of this vessel contract. Tyshawn oh. and myself have autographed the stamp, which makes us corporate oh. and under consent under Title 42, 1986, I have been presented. Did, did, did you sign it or did you autograph it? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. And, or been given knowledge of a grammar fraud on contract that <gasps> a grammar fraud on contract oh no please please put a stop to it sean is placed and i have placed into evidence and bonded to our constitution contract the constitution itself are the guidelines for which we will conduct we will conduct this hearing the Federal Postal Court was established by under corp, with a corporation claim number with David Hyphen Wing Colin Miller and myself at the Benjamin Franklin Postal Court in Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on December twenty first, two thousand twelve. Oh, that's reassuring. This particular fraud was established by another fraud. <laughs> I, I feel better now. Carry on. The court that corporation oath is on file with the Chicago, Illinois International Port Authority on 3600 <laughs> East 4th, 4th Street, 95th uh -huh. and Lakefront here in Chicago, Illinois. I, I, I highly doubt that, um, but but if, if he did file something there, I wonder where they put it, honestly. With the nearest federal postal station in compliance with Title 46, Section 314 for shipping. And the fee's been paid for freight, and I've autographed the stamps as well on that. So they have closure that my oath is on file with corporation between David and myself to be in this Illinois venue of it's Illinois. You said it right the first time. What What is the problem with everybody? <laughs> the, the state is pronounced Illinois. Learn it. Which gives me authorization to be aboard this 
charter vessel constitution. <laughs> the contract itself is a vessel. It floats through the, through, through the sea of space. The guide what? Charter vessel constitution? The, the constitution itself is a vessel and floats through the whatever. <laughs> are to perform with correct communication policy syntax grammar. What that means is that we have a, we have certification with cooperation between Taishan, Haifama, Marcos, Cole, and Dispenza, and myself. Okay, so you've uh, you've established this court via another fraud court. Then via your new fraud court, you've now established contract with an another member of, of, of the court. <laughs> and you are about to... Uh, to declare some action against people who are not present, nor should they be because your court's fraud. You have consent under Title 28, Document Contract Claims, Section 636. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't use the United States codes because all guidelines... Are because if we did, it wouldn't work out with, so well for us. So we've made up our own fantasy law. Rules and regulations for all 4 million statutes, codes and rules for the United States Co uh, system legal system is written in modification language where they've used adverbs in front of verbs, adverbs in front of adjectives, and adverbs in front of adjectives and adjectives in front of pronouns. In the in the yeah, just the way you've been speaking this whole time. It's called it's called English. That, that, that's that's how we do it. <laughs> and every time you say some of your crazy stuff and your punctuation salad you then have to go out and explain it in just those terms because nobody knows what you're talking about because it's gibberish syntax which is the way that they bring their sentence structure together and i could prove that math through a mathematical equation that this is engineered to be 100 percent fraud so I'll let's see it I, I was a math major let's see your mathematical equation that ought to be a good one. Board our contract, Tyshawn and myself, who have autographed the stamp, we have consent, we have knowledge that a fraud is being conveyed. And under Title 46, uh, Title 42, 1986, we are stopping and correcting joint as a corporation. The only thing that is on the, that is on the table here in this vessel market today is the forensic evidence of the lawsuit, the Quellorento summons, <laughs> and the authorization to dock our vessel here. Oh, Lord. And <laughs> the authorization to dock our vessel. <laughs> oh, this is where all these people are getting. Just found that the port authority is in the nearest post office to this location. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the qualifications of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Oh, that ought to be fascinating. For Taishan, as he comes into contract with this constitution. On Taishan's evidence, which is here, the style that is given for his performance and his cooperation with... Oh Lord! Now I'm understanding it all. That this is what Kirk over at Kirk's Law Corner talks about the the style. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get any better with him either. His performance is d done in a box by the Vassalis, who are not here to can correspond on why they used a box on their vessel contract. Why did you use a box on your vessel? Huh? I, inquiring minds, minds want to know. <laughs> Anything in a box is not on the page. So it breaks the continuance from one thought to another, but then it voids it by placing it in the box. So on the evidence... I mean, if you were speaking English, you'd want to say continuum there, but, you know, that's the least of our worries. <laughs> that Tyshawn has conveyed on this specific corporation case, relevant only to this specific corporation case, there is a box around all the performance closure within the box. So anything within the box isn't there. So this is virtually a blank sheet of paper. However, there are a few words that are formulated outside the box. We're formulating outside the box now. <laughs> I can't wait. 
symbolism or no syntax as a sentence uh -huh. other than they come in form as an adjective and a pronoun. So you, they're bringing two concepts together which creates adjective pronoun scenarios around the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think I've got a new t-shirt. Adjective pronoun scenarios. Either that or it be the title of my next album. One or the other. It's fantastic. Outside <laughs> form of these boxes that say nothing. At this time, Taishan says he has some new evidence that he would like to dock within this corporation case. Objection. We're, we're leading Taishan the witness here. <laughs> um, would you like to do that still? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. Um, would the Internal Revenue Service contest us docking these vessels within the corporation case? I, I mean, this is as crazy as it gets. They know the IRS is not in the room. <laughs> they know darn well they are the only two people in the room. <laughs> and we're going to have this little this little kabuki where, where he pretends to look for them as if, as if this is due process. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Once again, this is under rule one and rule equal for fairness and closure, since the Internal Revenue Service has been given knowledge that they're supposed to be here through the summons and through the <laughs> Charter Vessel Constitution of the location of this court hearing today. Uh, once again, I ask, do you contest us placing this into evidence? Why are you asking Internal people who aren't there? Do you contest us placing this into evidence? There's no contest here, Tyshawn. I can I can take that into evidence. Well, what do you know? Having heard no objection, the the uh, <laughs> exhibit is accepted into evidence. Fantastic! This thing is moving right along. We have syntax this. And we'll look at the syntaxing, and I will bond this to the summary judgment as we as we move forward here. Syntax and bonded. Let's roll. On this specific evidence, there is in your styles of syntax. A new Vasily that has entered into this case, the uh -oh. Department of the Treasury. So this will be... Dang! We're, we're, we weren't even looking. They, they, they got the, the Department of Treasury in as a defendant, too. <laughs> this is fantastic. Very efficient court. No, new evidence. And we have a signed cursive, anything cursive authorization on the back here. So we, I will give this gentleman full closure of this hearing today. He has 21 day correspondence back to correspond with this. So I, I'm guessing he doesn't. <laughs> when I post my summary judgment. Um, Wait a second. We, we've already made the determination of summary judgment here. <laughs> wow. This, this is quite a procedure. Let's talk a little bit more about grammar and the styles of grammar, which is your, uh -huh. which will be your cooperation to perform in correct communication, partially syntax grammar, to pay for the payment of your taxes in the correct communication, partially syntax grammar perform. I mean, on top of all the just, just crazy, you know, none of this makes sense. I, I, it, it's they, they haven't even picked a theme. Like, is this a court? Is this a seminar? Is he just, you know, right now it looks looks like a tutoring session for, for this guy. It doesn't even make thematic sense. For, forget about the substance. What this means, Tyshawn, hyphen Lamarcus Colon Dispenza, is that you will be given a command for the pitch. So you pay your taxes, granted, the codes, the laws, the rules, the regulation, the paperwork that the Vasily is the Internal Revenue Service and now the Department of Treasury will have to convey to you will have to be in correct communication parsing syntax grammar construct, which means the styles that it is conveyed to you. So you don't could participate in Title 18 document contract claims section uh, 1340 two under mail fraud so we don't want you to commit any mail fraud here which is in compliance <laughs> with your charter vessel constitution yes we're all worried about mail fraud evidence there it is in your styles of syntax uh, 1342 mail fraud and you cannot participate with that which means that if the meanwhile they are committing mail real mail fraud in real life left and right <laughs>
<laughs> by by uh, sending people false summonses and liens and bills of lading and wh whatever else they can come up with. Uh, the syntax that comes to your dwelling or your location mm -hmm. has to be in correct form, okay? So that you need to be cognizant of that so you can cooperate for the payment of your taxes. Uh, does the Internal Revenue Service contest that on this day? Yeah, still not here. <laughs> no correspondence back there. Okay, so I love how, how he pretends to look surprised. So you have full closure on what needs to be articulated as far as that goes. Some of these words that are being used in your new evidence, let's, let's, let's take a look at some of the parse, which means we're going to break those, break those words down into its, uh, to its form of closure. So you have a word here, internal. So let's look. Well, there you have it. Now you know where all the crazy comes from. This is Russell J. Gold, uh, along with, looks like inspired by David Wynn Miller in their crazy syntax, quantum grammar, make-believe world. It's, it's, as, it's as far out there as it gets. I, I've seen a bunch of this stuff, but uh, it, what's amazing to me is it's, it's just so transparently stupid, but at the same time, incredibly influential in these circles. I, I, I don't know how, but, but there you have it. Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court and every once in a while and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching.